Hello everyone, I am super excited because today I'm going to be talking about how to find the perfect scientific paper. But before I start, do you guys want to see my new plant? Isn't she so cute? One of the hardest parts when starting research and just trying to stay up to date in current scientific knowledge is to learn how to find and read scientific papers. So to start off, let me break it down for you guys. First of all, where can you even find them? There are a few different websites that I like looking for them the most and these are the most popular. Uh, and that is number one, Google Scholar. So this one you have to be kind of a bit careful because sometimes they will just put up an abstract or it'll be through a paywall, like you can't read the whole article unless you're subscribed to or your lab subscribed to or whatever. The next one is PubMed. So PubMed is an excellent source because you can find a bunch of different papers. This is more specifically for med sort of stuff or health sort of stuff. The next one is most universities have a uh, like search method through their library, which is amazing, phenomenal. And also what my school does is when you're on campus, actually using the Wi-Fi, the school Wi-Fi, you just pass straight through. You don't need to log in or anything and it'll just let show you the articles. So it sounds <laughs> very much like a first little problem, but trust me when you're trying to read like 50 different articles and you have to sit there and log in for every single one, it's a pain in the butt. So that's another option. Uh, I'm sure other universities have it as well. And the next thing is when you found that article that interests you, how do you find more like it? So there's a few different ways. PubMed, actually, when you scroll to the bottom of the abstract, it'll have similar articles that you could click on or this amazing resource that I found, and that is called Connected Papers. So Connected Papers, you type in the name of your article and it'll make this graph showing most recent papers that are similar and also how similar they are based on the length of the line connecting them. So now when you do find the paper, how can you check its legitimacy? First of all, you want your article to be peer reviewed. Peer reviewed means that other experts in the field have looked at it and well reviewed it and made sure that this was credible science. And the reason you want to do this is because that way uh, you can be sure that the results that you found aren't just manipulated uh, most of the time, aren't just manipulated or uh, in somehow, somehow changed. So now when you're actually publishing a paper, where do these papers end up? So something you might come across is a preprint. So one of the uh, websites which I came across the most is BioXRiv, but I'm assuming that's because kind of, I was looking for biology papers. Uh, but that website, basically a lot of people, what they do is they'll pre-publish. So they'll put their paper out on this website, this preprint website, and before it's peer reviewed or while it's being peer reviewed, that way people, other people can leave comments or other people can kind of see what's going on. Now, the next thing is something I did not know about until I had started working in the lab and that is predatory journals. Predatory journals are basically journals where you can, you have to pay an inordinate amount of money in order to get your paper published, or they just ignore the uh, peer review process completely, or some of them, like you could bribe them, and there's a whole list of other things which can happen. Basically, you don't want to contribute to uh, predatory journals because it can really hurt your both your reputation and also like that's a lot of work that basically is going down the drain so next thing when you're looking at the actual quality of the journal one thing that you can look at is the impact factor so the impact factor if you look at something like nature is like 50 versus a good impact factor is like around four and basically what an impact factor is is the number of times the papers in that journal have been referenced and so this is a great way for you to see uh, what, I guess, I guess <laughs> when you're trying to decide where to publish, for example, like where to publish, or when you're just looking at the journal, if you wanna see how legitimate it is, uh, that is also a great way to check. Now, when you're actually reading through papers, there are a few different citation managers that you can use. I recommend you talk to your PI, so principal investigator or the professor in whose lab you're working, or even just to check if your faculty or university in general has uh, 
some sort of subscription to and whatever uh, citation manager but one of the free ones is Mendeley and Mendeley basically you install it uh, there's like a there's an extension that goes on your computer and then whenever you come across an article that you want to save you just click the extension and it shows up in this other program so Mendeley is great technically because it connects to your Word doc. However, be very careful if you're sharing this Word doc because I did have trouble with that when I was working with a few different people. Uh, the citations kept getting all wonky, so watch out. Another citation manager is Evernote, but this is one that you need to have a subscription in order to download. Uh, so check if your lab has that because it's a great way of tracking things. And what I recommend when you're writing a report or whatever you're writing is to just put the last name and then the year that it was published. So in brackets, so for example, Dunder 2011. And that way you have uh, a, you know what's supposed to go there. And in case something happens with your citation manager, I'm speaking from experience, then you can go back and add in those citations super easily and you're not confused. Speaking of citations, when you're reading articles, try and save them immediately. And when you're writing, whatever you're writing, make sure that you are re referencing everything. I know it's super annoying, but trust me, it'll make your life so much easier when you're reading over what you've done. Another tool that you can use is Google Chrome. So <laughs> Google Chrome does this great thing where it, you could group tabs together. I find this sometimes slows down my computer, so again, watch out, but if it works for you, I think it's an amazing tool and it'll just make your life so much easier. And now let's briefly talk about the two different types of papers. So there's a primary paper and then there's a review paper. And a primary paper is a paper where, you know, kind of the classic idea of a paper. So you did research, you got some results and now you're publishing it. And then a review paper is a collection. So maybe in the past year, all the new advancements that have happened. So it's kind of a summary of the primary papers. There's actually a really great graph that I'll be putting up somewhere on the screen so you guys can have a visual. So I know that was quite a bit of information, but I really hope that it was useful. And if you guys have used any of these tools before, let me know what you thought about it. If you've gotten this far in the video, comment a little test tube emoji uh, and let me know what you thought about it. Are there any other topics that you would find interesting related to research, anything you wanna know? Don't forget to leave it all down in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.